and put it in the cloak of Mukashvia. Put it in the cloak of Keshefa. You take the Kudra, the power of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani, and combine it with the capacity to unveil, to so that you can see the reality behind the veil. Put those two together. Put those two together. Then take someone, Halim, that's been through the depths of the hellfire, in the belly of the beast, in the wilderness of North America, who only by the grace and mercy of Allah are they sitting here right now. And then you know why the Sheikh said you the Sheikh that America produced. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Remember that one? <laughs> oh, we, have, we got to do that again. The next time I'll take you someplace else. In fact, I had somewhere I wanted to take you all, but it started raining. <laughs> next time. I'm going to take you places that very few people ever get. <laughs> so, alhamdulillah, inshallah, I hope everybody enjoyed the food. We have, a, we have special guests here tonight. Everybody's a special guest, but we have some special, special guests. Of course, we have my beloved sister, Naila, my beloved. And we have Sister Nadella. These two shared last week with me, with Sheikh Sufi. But Sheikh Sufi, when, when I say Sheikh Sufi, when I say me, I mean him, me. Like, I don't even know the difference no more. It's like Shanton Tabriz and, you know, like Shem Tabrizi and Rumi. I don't even know. I understand that story about how I feel about Sheikh Sufi. Now, last week, we were in a group of people. These people were like whirling. We went into a realm, I'm telling y'all. We went into a realm that was beyond. The room started world. Tonight we're gonna world. Maybe not, maybe not like they world, but we're gonna world as far as our consciousness and our awareness of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, we're going to make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter into our hearts tonight. Uh, we don't need no psilocybin. We don't need no LSD. We don't need no mushroom. We get ready to take a trip. <laughs> now most of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I'm really rushing. I'm really rushing. <laughs> Some of y'all was like, oh shit. What did they put in the Kool-Aid? <laughs> Some of y'all. <laughs> ain't gonna tell you to be drinking when I'm drinking. You might understand what's in the Kool-Aid. <laughs> but some of y'all were like, oh, the Sheikh said he's gonna take us on the trip. Yeah, you get ready to trip tonight, said, Are you ready? <laughs> I love you, said. You know that, right? You know why I love you, said? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you why I love you. Because everybody trying to throw you out in the gutter. No, wait a minute. Don't say nothing else. I'll throw you out. <laughs> Everybody trying to throw you out in the gutter. But I ain't going to let it happen. You know why? Because where you are, I've been. You love Allah? What's you love Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You love me? Of course. What was that? Right? Right? He said. Anything else is a game of cards. Now that now whoever want to throw you out in the street, they got to come through me. Oh man! Oh man! Damn yeah! You love a lot. You love Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You love me. You heard me ask. Now remember what Sheikh Anwar said. Last week, remember that hug? Remember what Sheikh Anur said? She said, when you really love the Sheikh, she said, where do you look? She said, you look right here. Wow, Did she, she that. say that? Yeah, she said that. <laughs> Did she say that? She was gone. She was like, Then she said, if you really love the Sheikh, you look right here. She said that. Right here. 
Now we oh, becoming, oh, now oh, we becoming a Tarekah. You feel it, Daniel? Daniel, my Amir. What does that mean? That means in my absence, he is in charge. That means should, in case of my demise, if my demise comes before his demise, all instructions and all guidance come through him. He know what to do because I'm telling him what to do. He's the Amir. I ain't had any man before. I've had Mukaddam. I've had Naibu, Naib. I've had all the students, Naya, assistants. I've had Mukaddam. Now, Mukaddam is a very important position in Tosov. Mm. The best of the Mukaddam that I've ever that I've ever had was. Brother Dawood, who I happen to speak to today, I call Brother Dawood today. Brother Dawood traveled with me through the most trying, hardest times of my life. And he never left my side. He seen me when I was on my deathbed. I was so sick I couldn't get out of bed. In fact, the doctor told me when they took me to New York Presbyterian Hospital, they said if you had waited another half an hour, you was a dead man. <coughs> mm -hmm. I just took that and filed it under the same files for name that people have been telling me since I was born. Why have they been telling me that since I was born? Because my mother, may Allah give her paradise, had four children that died after birth. And they told her that she had a recessive gene that no child born unto her would ever live. So they've been telling me from the time I was a thought in my mother and father's mind that I wasn't supposed to survive. So I've been a dead man walking since the time I was born. You understand that, honey? That's it. I've been a dead man walking since the time I was born. The doctor said I was not supposed to have survived because my mother had four children that died after birth because of a recessive gene in her. <coughs> Allah plans and man plans as Allah is the best of planners. You think you got to tell me? You can tell me. But I already know. Now, can I say? No, it's your I got to. I got to. Pass the baton. And I, I don't pass it to I just anybody. You. But you know, you got it. I got to. Thank you. you. When I was in synagogue in West Africa, they had the phenomenon where uh, my chick sitting Sally to me. His mom lost several babies before he was born. Nah, 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 nah. So you understand. But they said, in West Africa, they say when a mother has babies that are born, Allah is creating a super soul. Nah, 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 nah. Allah is taking the energy of multiple souls and putting them together in one soul. Nah, 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 nah. To bring a super soul. This is what they say in West Africa. I don't know. Same thing. But remember, it's so all the land of the blacks. Yeah, it's, 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 it's all like, the land of the yeah, blacks. You just yeah. in the West, I was in the East. This is, yeah. So we, we're dealing with, um, thank you for, thank you. Uh, you now we have some ideas. <laughs> you was in Cali, I was in New York. Basically. Of the battle we met. On the same continent. Yes. Mm, that's beautiful. Four? Wow. We understand West Coast, East Coast. Yeah. yeah. Right. Wow. I forgot what's it about. You were saying that the Sheikh said that he was the that he was the product of a mother who couldn't have two. Super soul. Super soul, man. You got it. Yeah, so when a lot does that. He's taking the energy from multiple souls and putting them together to create a soul that can do some type of service for Allah here on the earth. 
And you see that in Africa a lot where there will be a sheikh whose mom had difficulties in childbirth. <coughs> and then when the child does come, that child is like Michael Jordan in the spiritual world. He got extra game. I'm just trying to make it plain as it's something you can understand. So a wild shake, I have no idea. Well, that's because that's because we are now on the Tonika Muhammadi. We are on the Tonika Muhammadi now. This ain't no joke no more. Never, never was it a joke, but it was concealed. It was covered until it was the proper time. Allah is al Zahir al Bartin. Nothing appears in the apparent without first appearing in the unseen. But the, the unseen comes before the seen. Mm. Everything that you see existed in the unseen realm. Allah is a zahir, the apparent. The body. The body. That which is that which is in the unseen now by Allah's decree will come into the scene. That which is in the darkness will come into the light. Now, why do we do this in this life? Why? Why are we going through this process? What is this process all about? This process is so that we can detach and die before we die so that we may live in this life. Detach. Don't attach your heart to no place, no thing, no one. La ilaha illallah. Who? La ilaha Your heart belongs to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, there's nothing in creation that can contain Allah. But were Allah to be contained in anything, it would be in the pure heart of a true believer. Allah is al-haq al mu'min. Allah is the true believer. What about this your language? You can't possibly understand Allah unless you understand the attributes of Allah. Don't you know everywhere you turn, you see the face of Allah? <coughs> I don't say this, Allah says it. The Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, said that you are a mirror unto each other. He said this. Jesus, the son of Mary, said the kingdom of God resides inside of you. The prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, he or she that knows themselves know Allah. Not they false self, not they corrupt self, not they lustful self, not they striving and <coughs> craving for the things and the love of this dunya self, but they true self. Whoever discovers their true self has discovered Allah. Um, you can take it or leave it alone. Don't say I told you something I didn't tell you. You can take it or leave it alone. Whoever discovers their true self, listen, whoever discovers their true self, you cannot discover your true self unless the source of all truth unveils and unravels the mystery of creation so that you can see and understand your true self. Because Allah is a haq. You have the Sharia. All of us are bound by the Sharia. You have the Tariqah. The Tariqah what? The path of who? The path of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's no getting around that. <laughs> Say, oh, I do this thing, I make this, I do this thing. <laughs> no, that don't mean nothing. Nothing. The Sheikh said it. He said, Allah loves those things in which I have made obligatory upon you until you continue to do more. But if you're not doing those things in which I have made obligatory upon you, and you think that you can circumvent and, circum and, 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 and go around those things to get to some higher spiritual station, then you're only deceiving yourself in illusion. You've got to start at the basics.
You got to start that good good. You got to start at the stingy. You think you can ascend to the highest heights of spirituality if you got streaks in your underwear? You ain't even cleaning yourself properly. What are you talking about? What are you like crazy? Put those little down. Put them down. What are you like nuts? Yes, there's many people floating around here crazier, nuttier than grandma's fruit cake. It starts with stingy, with purification, Tus tuskia. How can you think that you can purify the heart before first purifying the mind? How can you purify the mind without first purifying the body? That's why we have a fritra. Some of us walk around here with afros, and I don't mean on our hands. That's not the picture of this <laughs> What about this little lady? <laughs> Some of us take the picture. Pick it out. No, that ain't Islam. Islam is of Ibrahim al Hanifa. You got the clip, you got the shade, you got the trim. But people don't want to hear this. They want to fly. But you know what? Every plane got the land. And after you fly around, guess what? You got to come back like Stevie Wonder say, back to this cold, cold world. Purify, cleanse from the beginning. From the beginning. When we understand why Ibrahim alayhi salam was called the friend of Allah, And why Ibrahim salam, established in the Hunafa, the path of the Hanif, the upright, the correct, the pattern of the human fitter. Not just for his time, not just for the body of Israel, because they don't they have a false claim to him. Because Allah clearly says in the Quran that he was near, neither Muslim, neither Christian nor Jew, but he was Muslim. Hanif. What are you like? What's the Sheikh talking about? I'm telling you Quran. Ibrahim wasn't no Christian. Ibrahim wasn't no Jew. He was Hanif. Upright. Correct. This is the path we follow. This is the path of Sheikh Abdul Qadr Jalani Rakatole. Why? Because Sheikh Abdul Qadr Jalani Rakatole was, was Hassani Wa Husseini. He was descended from the Prophet through his mother and his father by bloodline. This is our way. This is the this is the Tariqa. Khazriya. Mokashviya. Fiamrika. This is our way. You can take it a little bit more. But this is our way. Now, if you want to really experience the path of love, the path of Maulana Jalahuddin Rumi, you want that path? You think love is given easy? How many of us have thought we love someplace, something, someone, and only to have been deceived because it wasn't real love? Even our own children, our wives, our own husbands, our fathers, our mothers, we thought, we think, we imagine that we love them. Do we really? 
If we really love them, then that love must be connected to Awadu, to the source of all love. You cannot separate earthly love from divine love because true love, al haq al wadud, comes from Allah and Allah alone. sanctums of your mind. You know clearly now, la ilaha illallah. So when you hear this tonight, you will know it as if you had never heard it before. <clears throat> it's not a chant. The essence of Allah is who? The absolute reality of Allah is who? Allah who? You keep it quiet, just 
Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Who? What? La ilaha. Say he, Allah, is one is totally false. Allah is not a he. Why would they translate this who? They, they're being lazy. These Arabs are lazy. Well, you know Allah is not no he. But you're going to say, say he, Allah is one. You didn't, that's what I'm to say a lot. Do you see what, my point, brother? Allah is not a man. Allah is not a he or a her. But these, let me be nice. These translators of Arabic who are scholars have said, say he, Allah is one. When Prophet Muhammad said, Allah is not a he. We have to think about this as a, Sabotage of what Allah said. Say, say who, who means being? Who means being? The, the being that exists, like the verb is in English? Like to be or not to be? To who or not to who? To exist or not to exist? So if you take that he out, you got a whole different surah. Not say he, Allah is one. Say that the being that has existence is one. Wait, hold up, wait a minute. Now we're talking about being, being one in the word universe. Uni means one and verse means the multiple, the multiple representations of the one universe. It's the same principle as kul hu, Allahu, ahad. Say this being that we call who is one, but not that this being is just one, this who is samad. So if Allah's being is one and this one is Samad, then where is there a possibility for a second being? Always have been, always will. Huh? Always have been, always will. Always has been Allah, always will be Allah. There's no possibility of another being having an existence other than Allah because Allah said, cool who? Say that this being that exists is Allah, is one, and that one does not, the one does not exists for a time period and then there's another one coming. You think there's another Allah coming after Allah? You're out of your mind like no more no more music by the suckers. That's public enemy. This being that Allah is one is eternal and there's no other being that exists with Allah. That's why we say La ilaha illallah. Allah is the only reality. Astaghfirullah. May Allah give us this yaqeen that is who in the Quran is not a he. These Arabs are being quite lazy to translate that. That's, that's, it goes against all of the Islamic principles to say he, Allah is one. Why can't you just give a real translation of what the word who means? We don't have the concept in Islam of God and goddess. We don't have the concept of a masculine God and then a female God, God and goddess. Nowhere in the Quran do you say, say, she Allah is one. The Muslims will come to your house and kill you if you say that. Well, if they kill you for saying, say, she Allah is one, maybe something should be done to these fools who are trying to make people think that he Allah is one. To me, it's just as bad. Because I don't want no, I don't want to worship a being that has a physical form. I want to worship a being that's beyond. I don't want a being that's physical because then the the Bible says he created the world in six periods and got tired. Mm. Who want to worship a being that get tired? Mm. Allah created the world and took a rest on the sixth day. That can't be Allah. Mm. Allah took, wait, hold up. God is all powerful. He created the heavens and the earth, but he got to take a rest on the seventh day. Yeah, Who is this? Allah said in the Quran, I created the universe and it fatigued me not. This is Allah. Allah doesn't get tired. So, astaghfirullah, man. Listen, may Allah give us the haqal yaqeen, the truth of understanding of who we actually are. Who are you? The answer is in the question. The answer is in the question. May Allah help us understand who we actually are. Al-Fatiha.